There's something strange, something unsettling about people with type O blood. It's the most common blood type on Earth, yet it carries secrets that science still struggles to explain. For millennia, the origin of blood type O has remained an enigma. Perplexing scientists and scholars alike, this blood type is found across the globe. Yet among the indigenous peoples of the Americas, it reigns almost supreme. Why would a single genetic trait dominate an entire continent and endure through tens of thousands of years? Over centuries, theories have emerged from migrations across the Bering Land Bridge to genetic isolation or adaptations to harsh environments, but none have fully unraveled the mystery. Then, in 2025, a groundbreaking study changed everything. Scientists claimed they had cracked a riddle spanning thousands of years. The question is, what did they uncover? Join us as we delve deeper. Blood type O has long been regarded as an ancient relic coursing through human veins, a biological breadcrumb trail leading back to the dawn of our species. Globally, it accounts for roughly 62% of the population, but among many indigenous communities of the Americas, its dominance is near absolute 90 to 100%. No other blood type exhibits such overwhelming prevalence. Geneticists call this a perfect anomaly, ubiquitous yet uniquely distinct, biologically. Blood type O is the only type devoid of A or B antigens on the surface of red blood cells. This absence makes it less likely to trigger immune reactions, earning it the title of universal donor. But beneath this familiar medical trait lies something far more profound. Blood type O is remarkably stable, resisting mutation and remaining untainted by blending with other types. Studies suggest this stability once gave ancient humans a critical survival advantage and immunity to devastating infectious diseases, including malaria. That swept through early populations. From a philosophical lens, blood type O is an outlier in the grand family of human genetics, unmarked by any faction, unaligned with any group, yet silently enduring through every twist of evolutionary history in its quiet persistence. Could it hold a greater secret, a key to the very first bloodline of humanity? To explain the uncanny dominance of blood type O, modern science has proposed several theories. The most widely accepted is the Beringia hypothesis, the bloodline across the ice, some 15,000 years ago, at the close of the Ice Age. Groups from Siberia crossed the Beringia land bridge, a vast frozen expanse connecting Asia to the Americas. They carried the O gene, then just a minor variant in the Eurasian population. Prolonged isolation in the New World allowed this gene to dominate entirely. Ancient DNA from sites like the Bluefish Caves in Canada confirms this migration carried a single ABO lineage. But if blood type O is merely the byproduct of an icy journey, why did it above dozens of other genes become the sole surviving marker after millennia? This question has sparked bolder hypotheses. One, known as the genetic filter, the ancient biological purge, posits that around 10,000 years ago, as Earth's climate warmed, ice melted, and diseases spread. Only those with blood type O lacking A or B antigens could resist a primordial virus. Those without it perished. Leaving O as humanity's biological firewall, ancient genetic samples reveal a bottleneck from this period, as if humanity passed through a brutal sieve of natural selection. If true, blood type O is not just a blood type, it's a living memory of a primordial pandemic that nearly erased our species. An even more daring theory the Baikal bloodline, the Sacred Lake legacy, suggests that before the Beringia crossing, a hybrid population of Homo sapiens and Denisovans lived near Siberia's Lake Baikal. Within their genes was an ancient ABO variant, dubbed O3 Siberian, which was passed to those who migrated to the Americas. Archaeological finds around Baikal, paired with ancient DNA, hint at an ABO lineage unseen in modern humans, if this holds. The blood type O we carry today may not be purely Homo sapiens, it could be the legacy of a lost human branch erased from history. And then there's the most mystical hypothesis, the sacred donor, the blood of sacrifice. From Egypt to the Inca temples, from Teotihuacan to the pyramids of Giza, ancient rituals spoke of blood that harmonizes with all blood the gods would never reject. Could our ancestors have recognized the universal donor trait of type O, revering it as a symbol of salvation? ancient carvings and fossilized blood samples, lacking A or B antigens, seem to whisper the same message. Blood type O is not merely a biological quirk, but a sacred emblem of survival. Linking humanity to the cosmos and the deities, they believed shaped their very blood. If so, 
Is modern science merely rediscovering what ancient civilizations knew millennia ago, that within every drop of O-blood echoes a memory of an origin beyond the human? When we trace the genetic map of the world, blood type O emerges as a crimson thread woven through human history. In Africa, the cradle of humanity, it held a high prevalence from the very beginning. As humans migrated to Europe and Asia, its frequency waned, giving way to new variants type A in Europe, type B in Central and East Asia. This shift reflects a complex evolutionary dance shaped by climate, diet, and social structures. But when humanity crossed the final frontier of the ancient world into the Americas, the pattern reversed dramatically. Blood type O reclaimed absolute dominance. Geneticists call it the survivor gene. Over tens of thousands of years, only those with blood type O could endure the brutal conditions of the New World, where disease, famine, and climate upheaval were constant threats. This bloodline enabled survival, proliferation, and left an indelible genetic mark uniting indigenous peoples from North to South America. Scientifically, blood type O is not just a biological variant. It's a living testament to millennia of natural selection. A landmark study from the 1980s in Arizona found that over 99% of indigenous participants carried blood type O, a prevalence too striking to be mere chance. Similar results emerged from Canada, Peru, and the Amazon. This bolsters the theory that harsh environments acted as a natural filter those with type O, lacking A and B antigens, were less prone to infections and had more stable immune responses giving them a higher chance of survival. They lived, reproduced, and repeated this cycle across thousands of generations, creating a genetic feedback loop that amplified the O gene's dominance. Yet beyond the statistics, blood type O carries a deeper meaning, a symbol of connection. From North American tribes to the Quechua of the Andes, from Amazonian peoples to Central American communities, the same blood flows through every culture. It binds not just through biology, but through memory, an invisible legacy, whispering that this entire continent may have sprung from a single bloodline, silently spreading through humanity's veins for tens of thousands of years in today's world. Blood type O is more than an ancient genetic relic. It's a cornerstone of modern medicine. Its lack of A and B antigens allows it to be transfused into anyone, regardless of their blood type, dubbed the life-saving blood. It's the first choice in emergency surgeries, mass casualty events, or natural disasters, where every second teeters between life and death. Yet, a bitter paradox persists. The communities with the highest prevalence of blood type O, particularly indigenous peoples of the Americas, are often the least served by modern healthcare. They carry the blood of life, yet lack stable systems for blood donation, storage, or distribution. Geographic isolation, inadequate infrastructure, and social disparities mean that this abundant resource remains largely untapped in global medicine. The challenge extends further. Globally, type O is in constant shortage not due to scarcity of carriers, but due to overwhelming demand, hospitals require larger reserves of O than any other type, making storage, sharing, and transport a perpetual struggle. Medical organizations are exploring solutions like long-term blood storage and even artificial blood a promising frontier for the coming decade. From European laboratories to genetic institutes in Japan, scientists are decoding the ABO gene cluster to pioneer new therapies gene therapy for safer transfusions, personalized medicine tailored to genetic profiles, and synthetic blood to replace natural supplies in emergencies. Rare ABO variants also hint at new ways to combat diseases from viruses to immune disorders. From an ancient trace in humanity's veins, Blood type O has journeyed far to become a key to modern medicine. Yet, as science seeks to replicate and enhance this bloodline, a deeper question lingers, could the true value lie not in technology, but in the act of sharing this blood a practice that has saved humanity for tens of thousands of years, in an era where we can read the very code of our DNA? Blood types are more than biological data, they are the memories of our ancestors, a cultural map embedded in our veins. For indigenous communities of the Americas, where blood type O reigns near absolute. Genetic research is not just science, it's a journey of rediscovery. Take the family of Sitting Bull, the legendary Lakota leader. After more than a century, scientists used DNA technology to confirm his descendants' lineage for the Lakota. This was more than genetic proof, it was an affirmation of their people's soul, a testament that their ancestors' memory lives on in every cell. 
despite history's attempts to erase it. For many tribes, DNA and blood types are a sacred language of memory, reviving lost languages, rituals, and ancient symbols. But this pride comes with a profound ethical warning as genetic testing becomes a commercial industry, ancestral heritage risks being commodified. Many indigenous communities face a second wave of exploitation not by conquest, but by technology. Thus, every strand of DNA, though a scientific datum, carries the soul of collective memory, inseparable from the cultural rights and spiritual beliefs of those who preserve it. Yet the story of blood type O stretches beyond the present, echoing in ancient legends as if our forebears sensed what science is only now beginning to grasp. Many indigenous tribes speak of a pale stranger with blue eyes, a visitor from afar who brought a strange blood never seen before. This figure joined their communities, married, and vanished leaving behind a distinct genetic trace. This myth, once dismissed as folklore, aligns eerily with modern genetic findings, an anomalous O bloodline that appeared abruptly and came to dominate the Americas. Geneticists trace this bloodline northward to Lake Baikal in Siberia, a genetic crossroads of humanity. Tens of thousands of years ago, East met West here. Ancient DNA from the region reveals intermingling between Siberians and pre-American populations, proving that part of the Americas' genetic heritage stems from this sacred land. Beyond this, Modern genetic data unveils a transoceanic connection some 800 years ago. Contact between Polynesians and South Americans evidenced by shared DNA between ancient Colombians and Pacific Islanders suggests ancient mariners crossed vast oceans, carrying language, symbols, and blood type O between worlds. As science and myth converge, one truth emerges. The blood in our veins flows not just through time, but through memory through encounters and exchanges that transcend geography. Perhaps, within every drop of O-blood, the blood no one rejects lies the deepest memory of humanity's primal connection. After decades of debate, 2025 marked a turning point in the study of blood type O, an international team of geneticists, collaborating between Kyoto University and the Max Planck Institute, announced a discovery that reshaped all prior understanding within the ABO gene cluster. They found previously unknown variants hidden codes explaining why blood type O boasts such extraordinary compatibility and disease resistance. These variants reveal that type O possesses a unique immune mechanism, allowing blood cells to evade attachment by numerous viruses and bacteria. This advantage likely enabled ancient O carriers to survive post-Ice Age pandemics, while other blood types faded from populations. This finding confirms that type O's dominance in ancient America was no accident, but the result of millennia of natural selection. The 2025 discovery does more than solve a genetic puzzle. It lays the foundation for a new era of personalized medicine. By understanding ABO variants, scientists can refine blood typing, enhance transfusion safety, and predict individual immune responses to drugs or pathogens. Research centers are now developing ABO gene therapies, aiming to replicate type O's universal donor trait to create synthetic blood, compatible with all of vision once confined to science fiction. Amid the equations, charts, and genetic data. A profound message emerges. Blood type O is not merely the common blood, it is an evolutionary witness, a biological relic of survival and connection. Every drop carries the story of icy migrations, ancient pandemics, and lost civilizations, a genetic legacy that has shaped humanity as we know it. The tale of blood type O is not just the history of a genetic trait, but the saga of humanity itself, a journey of survival, migration, adaptation, and memory. From the frozen shores of Lake Baikal to the Andean highlands, from myths of blue-eyed strangers to 21st century gene labs, blood type O has crossed every boundary, bearing evidence of humanity's deeper connection than we ever imagined. The discoveries of 2025 are only the beginning, for perhaps, within our very DNA, lie codes yet to be deciphered biological memories waiting to be awakened, ready to tell the final story of humanity's true origins. What other secrets dwell in our blood secrets science may not yet be brave enough to face?